I'm Jay Pitts, a real estate broker, agent, leader, and investor. For the last decade, I've navigated the craziest of real estate markets this country has ever seen, selling over 2,000 homes, moving in and out of markets, always ahead of the curve. And now I'm bringing that perspective to you. This is your resource, and Real Talk About Real Estate starts right now. And we're back, folks. Welcome back to another episode of Resource Real Talk about Louisville Real Estate. I am your host, Jay Pitts, broker owner of Remax Premier Properties, leader of JT Pitts and Associates. We, after a one week derby hiatus, we are here. And I feel like everything has changed in two weeks, is all, and it's all different now. So anyway, just a just a modest intro here before we get into today's topic. Please, please, please pay attention to this podcast anywhere you podcast on any of your streaming platforms. However, we appreciate special interests on Apple Podcast or iTunes, as well as Spotify. Five star reviews are certainly appreciated. Likes, shares, all of the above. If you don't like us, please keep it to yourself. If you do like us, we would appreciate any and all sharing of that information that you would like to do. I digress. I, I should say no. Honest feedback is appreciated. I, um, <laughs> but you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe just only be like just ever so generous. Uh, when it comes to the reviews, you know, I'll talk to you a little bit more about the socials, but check us out anywhere you social search my name, search resource podcast. We'd love to have you now. All that said, let's get into why everything is different. Uh, you know, just announced this morning, it is, you know, roughly 1 p.m. on Wednesday, the 11th of May. We've had, you know, uh, an 80 plus to one shot win the Kentucky Derby. Amazing in and of itself. Really uh, had a lot of fun watching that trip. If you haven't seen the aerial view of the backstretch, you should certainly go on the socials and find that. I've only watched it about 800 times, um, but quite exciting. Uh, also very interesting to see the Derby winner savage the outrider pony right afterwards, just biting that horse on the neck like dear Lord, it was it was savage. But anyway, I would say that the Derby winner was taking uh, taking a bit of a lesson from today's financial news, you know, just the savagery of it all. We've had interest rates climb multiple percentage points over the course of three months. We've had, you know, 8.3% appreciation announced this morning, which is another uh, record setting month for, for, uh, inflation. I should say not appreciation of inflation. We've got consumer price index being announced tomorrow and what factors to be a huge number. Uh, producer price index comes out in a week or so should be another huge number. I think you should expect that one to be the most eye popping of all because businesses are settling into new normal in terms of their costs to deliver their goods and services and buying those products from other businesses. The prices are through the roof. Um, but you know, I'm not a doomsday or naysayer. Uh, necessarily. I'd like to speak the truth. I have remained incredibly positive as it pertains to the outlook on the real estate market. I am still a proponent that there will be no bust. There will be no crash. This is not 2008. And I think there's a lot of data to back up that claim. Uh, I'm really excited for, you know, uh, a month or so from now when I uh, revisit my January production or uh, predictions for the year because I expect some of them to be substantially off base. However, um, you know, it's important to understand and recognize that the market is what it is. The realities of any market are what they are. You know, we've had agents that have been in the business for two to three years that have never had to endure negotiating a price reduction on a listing. We've had agents that don't know that expired listings for the majority of most real estate careers 
have been a substantial segment of business to, to go out and get the expired listings just don't happen in today's market over the last couple of years, post pandemic, you know, multiple offers on every listing, even the ones that managed to stay on the market 30 to 60 days end up selling for multiple thousands, if not tens of thousands above list under extremely favorable seller terms. We've been forced even as new agents to hone skills, develop skills that were previously unnecessary for the practice of real estate and other skills have gone completely undeveloped, completely disregarded altogether. So all this lays the backdrop for today's topic, which is the beginning of a trend that I see for resource in the coming weeks. And that is going back to the basics. Now, the majority of my audience, I would say is less in terms of years in the business than me, less experienced in terms of the number of transactions closed. And I would say that that's part of the reason why you listen to this podcast is you're trying to gleam some sort of knowledge or, you know, learn some sort of, you know, edge to be gotten over your competition. That's what we aim to be in this podcast is a delivering mechanism of knowledge, information, and experience. Because as I've said multiple times on this podcast, that there is only one and it is ill suited, but only one even ill suited substitute for experience and that's education. So I assume that's why you come here is to get some of that education, some of that experiential transfer from someone who has done it and seen it and been there. And trust me, I have been in bad markets, the worst market, 2008, 2009, 2010, worst three years in real estate that may have existed in most real estate agents lifetimes. I mean, let's take a moment and understand to go back to the last time inflation was what it is today. You'd have to go back roughly 41 years to the basically the day I was born 1981. I'm 40 years old. You have to go back to 1981 82 to find inflation at the levels that it is at today. Let that sink in for a moment. You know, the three month increase in interest rates that we have seen is unprecedented since that time. So now you need to go back to basics and what could be more basic than mastering the single most impactful, most anxiety inducing sales environment that a real estate agent can find themselves in, which is the listing presentation. So I am going to not only discuss the presentation today and I'm going to have to hit at a high level for time constraints that we have here, but I'm going to talk about the perfect listing appointment and I want you to follow along with me and I'm going to go through that because you know, the basics should first and foremost be a conversation of efficiency of, of converting the majority of your opportunities to a fruitful business relationship. If you generate five opportunities and only sees two or three of those opportunities, their Delta is either 60 or 40%, 40 to 60% Delta, you have a 40 to 60% opportunity for improvement. If you generate five opportunities and only take, you go on five listing appointments and only take two, that's a 60% Delta. You have a 60% increase in productivity without generating another single lead, without spending another dollar, just understanding how to craft a presentation, how to connect with another human being, how to help them understand that you're the person for the job. 
There's a reason why new to the industry agents tend to focus on buy side business. It's because when the buy side doesn't succeed or when the buyer doesn't find a property that they want to purchase or can't negotiate the price that they want. It's the market's fault. But when a listing doesn't sell, it's the listing agent's fault. That level of accountability is a huge burden to bear for someone who has never been there before. So let's go back to the basics. All right. The perfect listing appointment. Number one, or maybe I'll just, this will be like the little asterisk at the top of the page before you get into number one. Show up on time. Do not be late for a listing appointment that is starting off on the wrong foot. You, you are not only starting yourself on the wrong foot, you are shooting yourself in that very same foot all at the same time because you will likely not get the business. Show up on time. In fact, show up early walk around the house, let them see you looking at the exterior as they look out the front window, trying to determine when you're going to come in. Just show up at least on time a few minutes early. Do not be late. All right. Now you go up to the front door, you introduce yourself, you smile a lot, you shake hands, you have great posture, you have great energy. Okay. Don't be annoying and overwhelming, but definitely bring a level of energy above by one, at least one or two notches above the energy level of the prospect. You can't go so far that you annoy them, but you want them to understand who is driving the bus and you do that with positive energy being upbeat. Nobody wants to hire someone that has to be made to get excited about what they do. You are in the business of inspiring people to work with you. And you cannot be inspirational without being inspired yourself first. So be inspired. All right. Once you get in the side, the front door, you start kind of looking around the property. That's what you're there to do after all. And I would try to mosey in the direction of wherever you might be thinking that you're going to sit. If don't be awkward. Don't escape. Do the niceties. Have the conversation. Do the thing. But try to mosey over and ask if there's a place where you can sit your things down. You probably got a laptop. You got a notebook. You got a briefcase. You got something in your hands, right? You're walking around with with at least one crooked arm, right? That's what uh, old Brian Buffini used to say. Never show up somewhere with two straight arms, right? You either look unprepared or like you didn't, you know, value the relationship enough to bring them a gift. Um, but you know, this is not, this is not that type of situation that a client pop by, but show up with some stuff, right? Sh gives the, gives the appearance of preparedness. Okay. So you want to be prepared, but you also want to give the highest level appearance of preparedness. Show up with some stuff. All right. Ask if there's a place that you can sit down your things and then ask them to give you a tour of the property. Let them lead. Keep a comfortable distance behind. Um, experience the property as a buyer would so that you can give appropriate advice. What this is going to lead to is multiple questions being lobbed at you, <coughs> multiple questions being lobbed at you from the perspective of the anxious feelings that a seller has when someone, a stranger, a judgment person walks through their property. You are the first buyer. This is the first showing. They trust you. They appreciate you, but they're going to ask you to show them what is wrong with the house that needs to be fixed before they experience the showings with complete strangers that are going to judge it on the value of the price tag that they put on it and decide whether they're going to be making an offer. Okay. You need to be that first lens. Now, invariably you're going to see something that needs to be addressed. I don't want you to pounce on those items. I want you to simply the way I've coached you before on how to conduct a showing, I want you to simply notice those things in a way that allows the client, the prospective seller, the listing client that you're interviewing with, let them see you notice it in a way that doesn't make them feel judged. 
you know, kind of a, give it a little glance, a little look around, you know, the experts assessment. That's kind of the tone and the feeling and the posture that you're going to assume when they see you see the thing, let's call it a drywall stain on the ceiling. They're going to say, oh yeah, well we had a roof leak three years ago, but that's been fixed. We just hadn't gotten around to touch up paint. You know, it's the textured ceiling and that's, it's hard to make it look good. And you say, yeah, no big deal. That's no, oh, totally fine. Uh, no issue whatsoever. And then you just move on. We don't have to address a solution. If they ask right then and there say, yeah, you know, I think probably, you know, paint is typically touch up paint is typically a good return on investment in terms of presentation. This is, you know, an issue that would fall under the category of something that would be noticed by a lay person. And, you know, we want to give the appearance of the property being very well cared for. So addressing that is probably a good idea and then move on. And you're going to progress throughout the, throughout the house in this very fashion. Okay. You're going to point out things. And if you get lured into a, a discussion of, you know, the condition of the property further, you can go there. And, and what do we say? We, we break the need for repairs down into three categories. N category number one, will it show up in pictures? If the answer is yes, then we absolutely address it because we can't get people in the property unless it looks impeccable online. S step number two or category number two, will it show up to a lay person, a person that doesn't know anything about houses or how to maintain them in a showing, whether that be the agent or the buyer? We cannot rely upon the agent to give an accurate depiction of severity when it comes to a proper, an issue with your listing. So if, if the answer to that is yes, then it must be addressed because a big issue is we're setting a high bar with the marketing to get people to come and take a look and it has to meet that high bar in terms of experience during the showing. Number three, if it shows up in an inspection report, we may or may not address it prior to listing. Different inspectors have different uh, subjective opinions about what must be addressed and how severe it is. Different buyers have those same or different opinions, uh, depending on who they are. They may or may not expect something to be addressed. We don't want to put good money before bad by fixing issues that the buyer may or may not request of us. So categories one and two, yes, address them. Category three, maybe not. If it's mold in the basement, if it's a busted furnace, if it's an, a major appliance that doesn't work at all, yes, we're probably going to address those things because we know we're going to address them earlier or later and we can call on those upgrades to be a feather in our cap in terms of marketing. So moving through the house, you're addressing all these questions. You can leave that discussion for the table or you can have it organically as it comes up, but you want them to see you see all the flaws. This is going to reorder the seller's expectations of how well a showing is going to go if they do or if they don't address certain issues that you will ultimately recommend. Very, very, very important. This will take some time. Do not rush it. If it takes an hour, it takes an hour. Do not rush this part. All right. The next step I call the questions phase. Typically, you're going to do this after you sit down at the table and after you've complimented the property. Folks, thank you so much for having me out today. As I said before, I'm really excited about getting to work with you. That's, a, that's a, an assumed close right there. You've assumed that the relationship already exists, that you've already got the business. Now, you've also said you have a lovely home. I really appreciate you taking me taking the time to show me throughout the property. Okay. And help me understand the finer features and some of the things that you expect to address before we go on the market. You notice I'm using a lot of we language and assuming the relationship before it ever exists. Assume the relationship. Now you have a lovely home. That is important. It is important because the house may not be in great condition. 
Now, don't be obnoxious, but the importance of that statement is that you show the seller that regardless of how nice or not nice it is, that you are up for the challenge and you are capable of seeing it in its best possible light and you are capable of assuming the role and the responsibility of being the one to sell its finest features to the, the buyer that will pay the most money for it. It's incredibly important. Do not feel like you're being disingenuous. A home and its quality, a home and its condition are subjective. The beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And if you think the place is trash, then you're not the one to sell it. Period. End of story. Now, the questions phase is incredibly important after you've complimented the property and conducted the tour because you basically need to ask them, if there are any questions that they absolutely need to address during today's meeting because of a past experience of an assumption of the, the process, whether they've sold a property or not, basically what are the burning questions? Have they interviewed another agent and they heard something they liked or didn't and want to know your take or your, where you, where you land on certain issues you need to flush out these question marks before you start the appointment so that you know how to craft your presentation from there forward. Incredibly important. It could be something as, it could be commission, okay? It could be, you know, price, right? They're going to show you what is important to them during this phase of the presentation. If it's something rather benign, like, hey, is the market you know, is the market good? I mean, we hear the market's changing, right? You can address that right then and there. And what they're asking for, if that's the case, is they're asking for a vote of confidence. Are we stupid for trying to sell and buy right now? And there are absolutely virtues attached to this timing. So you're going to want to reassure them at that point. Okay. Now, if it's commission, you're going to punt. You're going to say, absolutely. That I can totally understand why you would want to know about my commission. It's the single largest expense that any seller incurs in the process of selling. So we're going to address that. But frankly, commission is negotiable and we need to get a little further into what you're trying to accomplish before we can discuss that. But I promise you, we won't leave this table until I address your concern. They're going to nod their head. They're going to smile. They're going to appreciate the professional response, and they're going to expect you to address it later in the appointment. If it's price, it's the same thing. You overcome that price objection by saying, you know what? I totally understand. Price makes, makes all the difference in the world. You, you, know, you know, price is what makes the difference between buyers and, or sellers and non-sellers. Okay. I, I would like to talk about that a little later in our presentation, frankly, because I want to get through and understand your goals and objectives. I want to help, sure, help make sure that you understand what we do to get the best results for our client. And I want to give you some advice about how we proceed. And then we're going to discuss price because it's the most important thing because it can de- rail all others, but I promise you we won't leave this table before discussing it. All right. Now, once you've flushed out and addressed the issues you can and set an expectation that you're going to address the others later, then you're going to pivot into your part of the presentation. So you've, you've done the tour, you've set expectations, you've let them ask questions, you've, you've assigned the appropriate amount of priority to their concerns, and now you're going to discuss what you do and why you're here. So once again, thanks for having me out. I like to discuss selling a property or assuming the responsibility of marketing a listing uh, from a context of three parts. Number one is my job. It's why you have me here. It's why you hire me. It's why our clients hire us to do the job that we've done for them in the past. That's what I call exposure. It is my job to expose the property to not just the most amount of buyers, but the right ones. I got to go broad, but I also have to go narrow. I'm going to go through with you some of the finer tactics and tips and things that we do to generate better than average results. In fact, we were the number one team in the state of Kentucky last year based on the tactics that we employ to sell our homes for more money and in less time than our competition. And then you're going to go into whatever makes you special. Or do you have the most reviews? Do you have the greater, the best list to sale price ratio? Do you do a lot of, you know, guerrilla type marketing? Are you a door knocker? Do you do major open houses? Do you have better online presence? Do you have 
tons of agents. Do you have an inside sales associate? Do you do what do you do that makes you you? Draw the disparity, highlight it, and the points of differentiation between you and your competition. You may show a brand new photographer. You may show, you know, a special listing video. You may show, you know, the results from a particular direct mail campaign. Lots of things do not, do not stop short of showing them that you care about the results that you get for your clients. Go all the way. Now, a caveat will t- I will tell you is that if this is a very closely held sphere of influence relationship, okay, if it's a very closely held relationship, don't beat them over the head. Ask them how much they want to know. Do not assume that they don't need to know anything and stop short of explaining what you do because if it doesn't go well and we're heading towards a market where listings are going to start staying on the market long enough. If they think that you've simply traded on the relationship and you haven't done anything because it's the single largest complaint is lack of proactivity followed by lack of communication. If you don't do anything and you don't tell them what you're doing, or excuse me, if you, they think you haven't done anything because you haven't told them what you're doing and they're going to come to the realization that you've just, whether it's true or not, that you've just traded on the relationship to get the business and done nothing with it once you had it. And that's a bad place to be with a close friend, but don't beat them over the head either. They're not marketers. They're not internet, you know, marketing nerds or real estate nerds the way you may be. So the minutia may be lost on them. Go far enough to help them understand that you you are serious and you know what to do, but don't go so far that you have them twiddling their thumbs or staring at their phone while you're talking. All right, once you get through exposure, you're going to pivot to appeal. And I'm going to do this hand gesture a lot when I talk about appeal. Exposure, I'm drawing to me. I'm taking ownership. I'm grabbing it with my gesture. I'm pulling it into me, suggesting this is my job. Appeal is your job. But after all, I don't maintain your property for you. I don't live here and I can't do that. Now, I can give you some tips and it's my job to consult with you about how to present this property in its best possible shape, its best possible condition. What, where do you get the best bang for your buck? Paint, landscaping, flooring, you know, where, where should you not spend your money? Professional staging or what have you. Okay. This is how you present your property in its best possible light. I'm going to consult with you, but it's ultimately your decision, your job, and your expense to deliver the property in its best possible light so that the expectations that I've created, which are really high in the marketing, are met when a buyer shows up and is on site. And then we're going to fold in some of the talking points we had during the tour, whatever that we got from there. And then we're going to kind of pivot from there to pricing. Now, the important part with price is that you accentuate its importance. Okay, beyond that, you're going to act like you've been there, you've done this before. You're going to explain your pricing in terms of a strategy. I like to break it down into three. You'll notice a trend. Everything is in threes. I like to have aspirational pricing, and I'm shaking my head no as I hold my hand up really high. This is where we price way too high and expect that we're going to come down in order to generate interest in the property. I'm shaking no because I want them to know that that's not my recommended pricing strategy. Number two would be the auction pricing model or the event pricing model. And I'm going to wave my hand really low here. This is where we're banking or betting on the fact that we're going to get interest because of the low the low price we start out at and get interest from multiple parties and we're going to bid it up. I might shake my head no there also, especially if they're already shaking their head no, because that's pretty risky even in today's environment. What I appreciate is a market-based pricing, and I'm going to show high but in the middle, not like where I was with aspirational. Gesturing is incredibly important to building rapport. So market-based pricing, lots of eye contact. What I think we should do is we should examine the comps that have sold in the, in the area using the comparable sale approach to, 
to, to valuation, we're going to come up with what we feel like is the exact number that the home will sell for, and we're going to market it at that, generate maximum interest, hopefully still gathering interest from more than one party, and then bidding the price at least slightly above list price and selling in a quick fashion. Because the last thing you want to do is, straight, is stretch out the marketing cycle and allow for buyers to develop the opinion that there is room for negotiation. If you notice the gesture of the price down with the word negotiation. All right. Now, you present pricing however you want to, but it's important to have a strategy. Okay. It's important to present unacceptable alternatives like pricing way too high. Okay. Or pricing too low. And it, but it's important to show that you've been there before. What we usually do is, what I say here typically is, use all of your language to suggest that you've been in this conversation many times, you've made certain suggestions, those suggestions have been followed and been followed successfully to the outcome that the seller wants. Pricing is incredibly important. It can derail both the marketing or the exposure and the appeal, your job, if we don't get the price right, I can be the best marketer in the world and you can have this place spick and span and it still will not sell. We have to come to an agreement on price because I need to feel good and justified in the job that I've accepted. Remember, I spend all my marketing dollars speculatively. I'm not here for practice. I don't, I don't need another listing just to generate leads. That's what you'll hear from other listing agents. You won't hear it from me. I'm in the business of getting you the results that you need and right now period, and let that sink in on them. All right, now moving on from there, okay, you've probably got the listing at this point, and this is also the moment where you're going to address any objections that they've given you earlier in the appointment like, appointment, like commission. We're full service, full fee. You know, we charge X percentage. We offer Y percentage to the cooperating broker. We feel like that's fair based on the marketing plan that we presented to you today and the job that you've asked us to accept. Once again, I'm thrusting that, that binary onto the seller. The job you've asked us to accept is another assumptive close. Don't, you can never assume the close too, too much in an appointment. So then you get into logistics, explaining and educating what a showing, a showing situation would look like, an offer presentation would look like, what possession they need to expect for, what the moving looks like, what all those things you discuss and educate to make a smoother relationship going forward. All of these things are incredibly important, but if you'll notice from the very beginning, I've assumed that the relationship was already cemented, that the assignment was already offered and accepted, and that they had the utmost confidence in me because I have confidence in myself. Now, it is absolutely necessary, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention it, that you must consider the personality traits and profile of the person you're meeting with. If it's an extremely submissive personality, you need to soften your tone. Mirroring and matching and rather rapport building tactics are absolutely necessary. You can't steamroll somebody who's very submissive. People may want to talk and want you to listen. Now, to get this in in, 30, in a 30-minute podcast episode, I am almost breathless right now. And that may lead you feeling like you need to go in there guns blazing, but I, I am telling you, you need to learn how to be silent. The listening presentation may take two hours. That's unfortunate. But I would say that you'll know when you step on site what kind of person you're dealing with or in the pre-listing call that you probably had to find out the finer features of the property. There's a lot of information that you need, but consider this. Every listing taken that sells typically creates one additional sale. So what's riding on this is probably tens of thousands of dollars worth of commissions. You should be prepared. You should take the time to prepare. The majority of the listings that I've ever lost have been simply due to lack of preparedness because I thought I had it and I didn't prepare enough, and I didn't get it. Haven't been many of those, 
and I kick myself every time it happens. Prepare yourself. Follow this framework. You'll be successful 75, 80, 90% of the time because you'll create high levels of differentiation between you and your competition. Okay? And the client will come away from it feeling like, wow, I'm surprised that people told me that this was a frustrating process. It's pretty simple, really. All right, in review, do the tour. Be positive, notice, and let them notice you see the flaws of the property. Ask good questions. What are the burning questions that you need to get answered? What do we need to achieve today before I leave? And then address those in the appropriate sequence with relation to everything else you're doing. Get into exposure, my job. Appeal, your job. Pricing, our job. Have a strategy when it comes to pricing. Go over the logistics in detail. Take your time. Take your time. And 90% of the time, you will come away victorious because no one else does this. No one else prepares the way you will be required to prepare to deliver this perfect listing appointment. That's all we got for you this week, folks. As a reminder, you can catch us on all the socials, facebook.com slash the resource podcast on Instagram. Pretty please give me a like trying to get to 10,000 for the years up. I think I was at 7218 as of this morning. Could use 2,800 more of you throwing me a like over there. You can catch us on the reels, catch us in the feed, doing a lot of quick hit videos for you. Um, some interesting stuff we're doing here uh, within the confines of the JTPA team. So at J Pitts Realtor on Instagram. Also would love to see you over on TikTok at J underscore Pitts, youtube.com slash J Pitts Realtor, where we stream our episodes live and where all things video lives for the JTPA team and Remax Premier Properties. You can find me on Twitter at JTPA Louisville at JTPA Louisville. You can also find this podcast streaming anywhere you podcast. Specifically, we'd love to have your attention over on Apple Podcasts or iTunes, whichever you want to call it. Hit the plus button, subscribe, like, you know, share, review, all those things, and Spotify as well. We would love to build our following on those platforms. But once again, that's all I got, folks. Hope you take my advice in this ever-changing market that we have here in 2022 and go back to the basics. Listen and re-listen and re-listen to this listing presentation format. You will carry on, you know, in your appointments with greater levels of confidence and higher levels of success. I implore you, please listen to this episode. You ought to bookmark it. This should be your go to before you go to a big listing presentation. But once again, I am Jay Pitts, broker owner of Remax Premier Properties, leader of JT Pitts and Associates for Resource Real Talk about Louisville Real Estate. See you next week. Mm-hmm.